Our scripture today comes from Romans chapter 1, verses 19 through 25, and you can find it on page 914 in your pew Bible if you'd like to follow along. Hear the word of the Lord. For what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has shown it to them. Ever since the creation of the world, his eternal power and divine nature, invisible though they are, have been understood and seen through the things he has made. So they are without excuse. For though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they, came, but they became futile in their thinking, and their senseless minds were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools. And they exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling immortal being, human beings or birds or four-footed animals or reptiles. Therefore, God gave them up to the lusts of their hearts to impurity, to the degrading of their bodies among themselves, because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator, who is blessed forevermore. Amen. Chapter 9, 23 to 27, he says, 
This is what the Lord says. Let no the wise boast of their wisdom, or the strong boast of their strength, or the rich boast of their riches. But let the one who boasts boast about this, that they have the understanding to know me. And I am the Lord who exercise kindness, justice, and righteousness on earth. For in this I delight, declares the Lord. It's just like if your IQ is 180, but you cannot boast about it. If you are, you are a muscle man, you go to gym every day with strong muscles, you cannot boast of it. Or if you are a millionaire, you have endless, like countless money at your hand and you cannot boast about how much, how rich you are. Those seems advantages for our life, but God told us that they are not something that we can boast. What we can boast is to know Him, to know who He is. So we all know that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Most of us try to be smart, but what's the definition of like wisdom or smart in God's eyes? It's to know Him. The important thing is not depends on, as a Christian, what we did or what we say. The important thing is depend on how well do we know God. Christians are Jesus followers. But sometimes, let's take a minute to think about it. Do we really know God? So, what does it mean to know God? Does it mean that if I go to seminary and have a lot of knowledge about Him, that I know Him? Or if I am a religious person and I'm really focused on different kinds of uh, rituals, does it mean that I really know Him? For me, I think um, knowing God for us is to be more and more like Him. It's the transformation of our life after we know Him. Second is, how do we know God? <coughs> we are human beings, and our understanding and our ability or our IQ is, is still very limited. Uh, to know about the word, to know God. So, because of God's grace, He reveals to us. Other religions are from button to up, like um, self-seeking, self-discovery, and do different kinds of rituals, try to know God from button, from down to up. But Christianity is from up to down, because God told us who He is. So how can we know Him? The first one is creation. So since what may be known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His internal power and divine nature, has been clearly seen. Being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuses. From Romans 1, 19 to 20. The first book of Bible is Genesis. It's about, it's record like how the creation will be like and how God created the world in true human being. Knowing God actually is also a way to know about ourselves because we are God's image bearer. 
By knowing Him, we know that what kind of life we would like to live and what kind of person we are. Just like some people look at me, we will think of my parents because I have the gene from my parents and some part of my face or my body might look like my parents. So when people see me, they will think of my parents. Similarly, when people see Christian's life, when people see everyone's life at church, like they can see how God has been working in their life and how God has been transformed their life. From nature, we can see God. From the rain, from the sun, from the moon. From the seasons, we can see God. There are four seasons. Different seasons has different scenery. I think the favorite season for me in here in Illinois is fall. I think after a while, you can see the leaves will turn different kinds of like uh, colors. There might be yellow, there might be red, and still some of them are still green. So it's so colorful and it's so wonderful. And from the beautiful flower, like, um, I just saw Jerry and Carol's garden. There are different kinds of flowers there and they are so beautiful. And trees and also universe. <coughs> so take a minute to think about the universe. Like every star, like they are in the exact distance, not closer or not further. That's why the consequence will be horrible. If it's closer, for example, like the sun and the earth, if they are closer, it will be too hot, right? If it's too <coughs> far away, and it will be too cold. But they are exactly correct. Exactly <coughs> the right distance. Not saying such a big world or big universe. Just for each of us, we are a human being. But nowadays, even scientists, they haven't known everything about our own body. Like, for example, the DNA. Scientists still discover the secret, the code <coughs> of DNA. Second, we can, uh, from the Bible, we can know God. Here is knowing God not know about God. What's the difference about it? For example, like, um, give me someone like as your superstars. Any ideas? Oh, I like Iron Man, anyway. Um, so I know about Iron Man. I have heard about him, and I know he is so smart, he can put a robot to himself, and put a heart to himself so that he can fly. So I know about Iron Man, but do I really know Iron Man? No, right? Because I didn't spend time with him. I didn't know who he is, right? It's similar, like um, our life with God. We know God, but we, we not just know about Him. <coughs> Everyone here, I, I bet you have um, know about God. You have heard about Him and like to maybe heard your friends or uh, family talk about Him. But do you really know Him? Right? Until the moment you spend time with him, until the moment you set apart yourself every day, have some time, like to be with him, read the Bible, pray, to talk to him. Just a moment, just a moment that you and God. Bible is God's word. 
And um, there include like almost more than 40 authors. They are from different time, they are from different environment, but what they have written, they are the same thing, all point to God. In 2 Timothy 3, 16, it says, All creatures is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Bible is also God breathed. When God made Adam, he breathed into his nose so that he become alive. The Holy Spirit also inspired different kinds of author um, of the Bible. So they can write the words that God inspired to write. You can see how amazing it is like the Old Testament, the promise in Old Testament complete in the New Testament. The third is from the Holy Spirit we know God. From 1 Corinthians 2, um, 10 to 11, it says, These are the things God has revealed to us by His Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who knows a person's thought except their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. So that's what we think others didn't know, right? But the Spirit knows. Just like what, how God um, is thinking, we don't know. But His Spirit, the Holy Spirit, inspired them, inspired us to know Him. The fourth is incarnation. It's like uh, God sent His uh, only begotten Son, Jesus, come to this world to save us to die on the cross for our sin. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word is with God, and the Word is God. The God we believe is three in one, three person, but one God. The first human being, Adam, since him, Sin come to this world because um, he's born. But since because of Jesus Christ, because of these people, his salvation saved us, saved every one of us by believing in him that we can have eternal life. Just like we cannot know how um, like bees was talking about. One of my friends, um, she really liked to raise bees. Like she have a hay and then different kinds of bees flying. So we don't know what bees, like how they communicate, what their language is. So just like God sent his son, Jesus, to be with us so that he will know the suffering we suffer, so that you will know the trouble we have, so that you will know the emotion that we bear, the burden we have as a human being. The third is, how does the God be like? Who is the God? The God we believe is the only one true God. So, I am the Lord, and there is no other. Apart from me, there is no God. Some people thought like, oh, Christian, the God you believe is so exclusive. Like you said, the God we believe is the only one true God. Others are forced. But just like truth, for example, one plus one equal two, right? If it's one plus one equal nine, and then we know that it is wrong. We take the test, we write it down, how teachers know we are wrong, because there is a standard. So just like 
if the truth that God gave us is only one, and then I think the God we believe is the only one true God. Others are false. In Romans, they're talking about different kinds of idols, and people worship different kinds of things. Um, some people worship the land so that they hope that they can um, have a good harvest. Some people worship uh, the tree. They thought they are mother of God and they, they thought they are um, to worship the nature. But have we think about it or like, or idols, have we paid a minute to think about it? For example, idols are made by who? By man, right? So does it mean that man is super than the idol? So, that's why we didn't worship idol, because it's a force. And some people turn the worshiping into an exchange. There was something very ridiculous, like for uh, the beginning of the year. So in China, there's a, uh, some people will spend maybe more than 8,000 yeah, to, to bid the um, first lanterns, to bid the uh, first stroke to the, to the bell. In order to exchange good luck, good fortune, health, good grade at school, different kinds of wishes. So the worship is more like an exchange. It's like a train rather than just worship God. God loves his people. He is full of grace. He is full of mercy. When we are still a sinner and Jesus died for us, so that we can have internal life. From Psalm 136, it has several um, sentences, but they all end with His love endures forever. God is good, God is just. Sometimes we might complain that why we have to suffer so many things. Either our life, our career, our health, our relationship. We complain about the life is so unfair. Why I have this disease? Why I was being treated in this way? But I think always, there's always thing that really confirm me is God is just. God is just, he knows what you have been suffering. The third, uh, the fourth is, what kind of attitude do we need to know him? Knowing God makes us humble. And when we are humble, we can know more about God. We can know better about God. So 1 Peter 5, 6, it says, Humble yourself, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. We humble ourselves, but God lift us up. But if we are very proud, then God will turn us down. 
God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. From James 4, 6. Just like a cup, if it is full of water, what if we put um, more water on it, what will happen? Yeah, it will flow out, right? You cannot like pull more water in. But it's an empty glass. You can still pull water on it, right? We are the same as we are the vessels, as we are the um, the glass to hold God's grace, hold God's mercy, and hold God's plan in our life. We have to humble ourselves first. If we are not humble ourselves, if we don't ask God's help to humble ourselves, how can we install God's love in our life and God's plan in our life? In the Bible, it's talking about a Pharisee and a tax character that pray together. A Pharisee feels very good about himself, and I follow, like I um, donate um, 10% of my income, and I do everything very good, I obey the law so well. But in contrast, the tax collector, he is the, this kind of person was being locked down by his people because um, they collect money for the Roman government and they thought people thought they are betrayed people uh, they betray them so they are very hated by other people but even like this kind of person he realized his fault he realized his sin and betray. He repent and he said, like, beat his chest and said, oh, I don't deserve this and I, I, I'm wrong. You. Do you think who God will favor to? Is it the Pharisee or the tax character? Second is seeking. Seek Him and try our best to seek Him. From Hosea 6 3 it says, Let us acknowledge the Lord. Let us press on to acknowledge Him. As surely as the sun rises, He will appear. He will come to us like the winter rains, like the spring rains that water the <coughs> Our thinking sometimes kind of lossy, like it's very flexible. <coughs> Some people think that I will Bible today. Tomorrow I'm fine. I pray today and tomorrow I don't pray. It's okay. But is it the attitude that we press on seeking Him? We press on to acknowledge Him. Do we have an intimate relationship with God? Are we growing every day knowing Him more, knowing Him better? I challenge every of you today to um, set a piece of time and set, uh, find a place that you feel comfortable with just spend a minute with God and pray to Him and talk to Him. To lay down your burden to Him, to lay down your worry to Him, to lay down your anxiety to Him, and lay down your hope on Him. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, just like the deer pants for water, we long for you. There is a hole that made in our life, made in us, that only you can fill in. People try to numb their pain by drug, by alcohol. 
by pornography, by different kinds of substance use, maybe by tobacco. But we know that there's only one can feel it. Only you can feel it. Lord, I'm so blessed that every one of us have known about you. But would you please help every one of us to know you, to truly know you, to really know you, who you are, and how you have been done in our life, and what amazing work you have done in our life, that we continually worship you from our heart, to be joyful, to be kindness in our life to others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.